Okay, one, two, action. What is up, guys? Fahan here with Zah once again, and today we have our brother here, Chris. How are you, man? Hello, I'm good. I'm good. Good to be here. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you. Very wet day. Very wet day. Yeah, you know, right? Your shoe got wet, not? Almost, almost. Ah, lah, hey, <laughs> yeah, by say lah, go for a few days raining. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, we have the Yamaha Diversion XJ900. Eh. Yes, sir. Yeah, civilian model. <laughs> civilian. 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 Model. civilian <laughs> uh. Don't be mistaken for the stealth TP. Eh. Ah, stealth TP, yes, correct, yes. correct. I'm trying to make it look a bit stealthy. I didn't I, I didn't want to do white because if it's white, I will end up on certain Some Facebook <laughs> certain Facebook pages. Yeah. I yeah. try not to do that. But uh, so black was the better choice. Okay, so Chris, why the Yamaha Diversion? Because given that this bike are uh, already out of production, one thing. Not scared man, not enough parts to go around, you know? Well, I think now it's mostly, it's like a item of historical significance. Mm -hmm. Especially if you are a driver in Singapore. Uh -huh. you look in your rearview mirror, you see that unmistakable, the fairing. <laughs> <laughs> and you sort of know what's happening. Mm -hmm. But parts-wise, because LTA still operates this bike, Mm. So there are parts that are still available. Mm -hmm. It's slightly pricey. Mm. But the good thing is this bike was made in a time where Yamaha was transitioning to their more modern bikes. So a lot mm -hmm. of the parts from this bike ended up on more of their modern bikes. Mm -hmm. So actually there's quite a lot of parts that I can you are know, cross compatible with uh -huh. this bike. Mm. So for example, like my gaskets are all from I think X Max. Oh okay. Yeah, oh, really? okay. My gaskets are from my X Max. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So even up to now. I mm -hmm. just have to find uh, it's a matter of doing some digging. Oh, it's like a jigsaw puzzle like that. Eh? Then the shaft also from the FGR, right? Correct. Then I also heard that the Super Tenere mm -hmm. also uses the same shaft as this bike. I mean, don't fix what's not broken, right? <laughs> if it served the diversion well, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure it will serve many, many more Yamaha bikes to come. Yes, true, true. Yeah, maybe the lack of ready technology is the one that this bike uh, misses up lah. Yeah, it doesn't have ABS. It doesn't have you know, traction control. Right. So it forces you to be a little bit skillful. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, you get to have that raw experience of riding that I don't think a lot of modern bikes can mm. give you. You know, because you're so reliant on the technology mm -mm. Yes. and everything. So now with this bike, you're I'm really forced to ride properly. Because if I don't, the bike doesn't forgive me. <laughs> yes, true, true, yeah, true. You say uh, because of the technology, uh, it dampens out the raw power. Correct. It rides very well. Mm. It handles very well. It's very heavy. It's almost close to, I think, 300 kilos in its current configuration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, getting it around, I mean, just trying to shift the bike into this frame yeah, correct. Uh, was a workout. I have to thank Zah for this because he's an expert. Yeah, <laughs> he did a pretty good job. I, couldn't, I, I wouldn't have done that, but he did. <laughs> yeah, to turn this bike 180 degrees around. You need a lift, la, the rollers. <laughs> Skill. Oh yeah, there is a, there is a, the, those ro the rollers you know you put under yeah. the tires. Mm. Uh. So, so tell us the history about this bike and how much you bought it for. Uh, okay, so you... this bike is a 2003 uh, Yamaha Diversion. Mm. It was an August model, mm. which means it just escaped the NA rebate. Mm. So uh, it was eligible to do a 10 year renewal. Mm. But looking at the age of the bike and seeing that parts are no longer readily available, I've just done a fire renewal because I like the bike but I don't think I have the commitment to maintain it for another 10 years oh, especially if yeah. parts are slowly getting less and less True. The bike originally it was silver with some of the additional bits like the fairings okay. all these are white because they come off uh, retired traffic police bikes ah. that's why civilian uh, civilian bike <laughs> I see. Oh, so previously it was a TP bike? No, so the bike itself stock is a civilian oh, uh, diversion. Okay, okay, okay. You can tell because the chassis itself is silver. 
Hmm. Uh, Yamaha oh, Ponies yes, models yes. all came with black uh, chassis. You can tell. Uh, so if you ever see me behind you, look at the chassis first. <laughs> <laughs> Silver <laughs> don't scare. Only the accessories wise. So yeah. From the so mm -hmm. yeah. So so stuff like the pillion fairing, the box. Mm. Those are police accessories lah. Mm -hmm. So those were all in white to match the color scheme. If not, it looked like jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so I, got, I just recently got this repainted. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see, just over three days now since I got the bike back. Oh, wow. I think the black makes it look a bit sleeker. Mm. Yes. But uh, there's still a lot of work to be done for this bike. Uh, I still have to clean out the engine. Oh, okay. Uh, that looks horrible at the moment. So far, before this bike, what were you riding? Okay, so that's a fun story. Oh, okay. So before this bike, I was riding a CB400X. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but before the CB400X, mm -hmm. I was riding a diversion also. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? Diversion fan. And that diversion, Fan has also written it too. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. Uh. Yeah, so, such a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's when I fell in love with the diversion mm -hmm. because I think number one, it sounds perfect. Yeah. It's a four-cylinder bike with twin pipes. Nothing can beat that sound. Oh, yes, yeah, true, true. The sound, yeah. is, the sound really is distinctive. Yeah, yeah. sounds like a jet fighter. <laughs> yeah. right. Very so, mellow, bassy. Yeah. Before the that diversion, I was riding a CF Moto 400, mm -hmm. which was in white and looked like a TP bike also. I bet you that people in the comments that are going to say this wannabe TP guy. Yeah, of course, <laughs> I tried, okay. They didn't <laughs> let me. <laughs> so this is the next best thing. <laughs> you cannot get the work, you get the bike, lah. Yeah. <laughs> At least. You know, the TP, the TP officers that stopped next to me, which look at me, they give me this funny face, yeah. then they were not. I have had one TP officer tell me, oh brother, this one I used to ride last time, you know, very good bike. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I'm riding so they it now. give you the stamp of approval also, eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the previous owner of, of this bike is, uh, is, uh, is actually from the traffic police. And he, he rode this bike for almost 17 years. And he really, really took care of the bike. So mechanically, this bike is sound. Mm -hmm. I have not had any mechanical issues with this bike. It was more of the aesthetics because it's such an old bike, 20 mm -hmm. years old. You know, there were scratches, the paint was fading. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I had to give some love there, which is why I did the paint. There's still a very long to-do list for this bike. I'm trying to get it back to a TP spec, mostly for shows. Bike week and all is something nice to bring <laughs> because this bike is no longer on the streets as a petrol bike, yeah. but mm -hmm. it does hold very significant value for as Singaporean riders and uh -huh. drivers. Yes, yes, true. Because at one point in our lives, we have seen this bike. <laughs> <laughs> Whether for good or bad, that's up to you. Yeah, like it's, it's the, you know, the silhouette mm. is really recognizable, you know, from far east. Hey, is it a TP bike? Am I being followed by him? Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, fun fact, the traffic police logo uh -huh. features the front of this bike. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which is why a lot of people sort of realize that it's TP because mm -hmm. At one point, you have seen the traffic police logo. You've gone to the driving center. You mm -hmm. got your license. The logo is there. Maybe yeah. you didn't remember it then, uh, yeah. but that silhouette is in your head. So when you see the bike, you're like, hmm, <laughs> I've seen this somewhere. <laughs> so I mean, this this was the iconic patrol bike for the traffic police. Yes, yes. I mean, before this, they had the CBX 750. But I think the longest serving bike has been the Diversion. Yeah. And I think for good reason, it's a very reliable bike. Mm, yes. Right. Mechanically, it was built in a time where. The engine was bulletproof. Mm. Mm -mm. You know, you could shoot the engine and I'm pretty sure the bike will still go. And it's air cooled, so yeah. it takes away the guesswork of having a liquid cooled system. And and it does an amazing job as an air cooled bike. You don't feel the heat. Mm. Mm, yeah, correct, yeah, correct. You don't feel yes. the heat. Mm, yeah. Unless you have stopped for 20 minutes at the side of the road, then you feel the heat. <laughs> <laughs> but that any bike will experience. Yeah. But sure. riding wise, you will never ever feel the heat. Okay, that's interesting. So far under your care, has the bike given you any problems? Mechanically, the only issue that I've had so far has been my brake. My rear brake caliper mm -hmm. seized up two days ago. It was basically due to the fact that the brake was so old, all that mud, the dirt, whatever has gone into the caliper mm -hmm. and then it caused my piston to cease. Uh, so, that was a bit of an issue for me because mm -hmm. I didn't know if any shop would want to do my bike. So, I just went around Kaki Bukit. I find a shop that said, okay, we'll try. You know, three hours later, they managed to take out the caliper, mm -hmm. clean it out. It was filthy. The kerosene was black in color. 
Oh. <laughs> and then you also discovered that my brake pad had like less than one percent of my brake pad left. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, but it was still breaking, so let's say something. Uh -huh. But then they couldn't find a replacement brake pad, so I had to wait another three hours for a brake pad. So apart from the brake, the bike has not given me any other issue. It is a really a, a cosmetic thing for this bike, mm -hmm. yeah. because the previous owner really took care of it, lah. Mm. So. You mentioned earlier that you also rode another diversion. Yes, right? I did. Uh, uh, what color was it, and has it given you problems? Okay, so my previous diversion, if you managed to find Fan's old video, it was a white colored diversion. If you look closely, the side boxes are from that diversion. <laughs> they have continued on in another bike. So that one was white in color. That one, aesthetic wise, was very good. But mechanically, they had a lot of issues. Because I think in case it keeps changing hands. Mm. And the diversion for a lot of people is not a daily rider. Mm. It's more of like a weekend bike. And if you don't ride it for a long time, it will start giving you shit. Because it's a carburetor bike. Yes. You have to keep taking care of it. Mm -hmm. So like the previous carburetors, the rubbers were gone. The cups were out of sync. Mm -hmm. The fuel line was leaking. Mm. My fuel tank was leaking. <laughs> oh, okay. the fuel consumption for that bike is yeah. so high. Plus the headers. All the header gaskets had deteriorated and uh, one of the oil lines was cracked also. Whoa. So it was leaking oil onto the header. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, so I brought it into the shop. Mm -hmm. and they quoted me close to 5k. And <laughs> that bike was an April 2003 bike, which mm -hmm. means it was unusual for any rebate. Oh, the moment okay. they told me 4k, I said, bro, I sell you my bike, <laughs> give me my any rebate plus whatever value you can give me, <laughs> I will carry on on my way. <laughs> so I got back around okay. 5,500 for that bike. I wanted to get another diversion, but these are very few and far between. Mm -hmm. yes, so I went back to the good old 2A 400X that didn't fail me. Once you go for a shaft bike, bro, mm. you never want to ride a chain bike again. <laughs> See this? Yeah, yeah it's, it's so smooth. You don't have that jerk from the chain, you know, mm, so it's, yes, the yes. shaft is transmitted very evenly, the, the power. It was very hard for me to go back to a chain drive, 400cc chain, chain drive bike, but it was very fuel efficient, I'll give it that. Mm -hmm. If you want a fuel efficient bike at 400x, don't buy this bike. <laughs> yeah, but fuel efficiency for this bike is on the lower end. Mm -hmm. Full tank, I can maybe get around on highway all the way, maybe 300 kilometers. So How big is the fuel tank? Is? So this fuel tank is actually 24 liters. So it's, and it's a 5 liter reserve. So usable is around 19. Mm. So actually on the way here, I'm already on my reserve fuel. Oh, well, lucky so, you pump. Huh? Lucky. <laughs> lucky. <laughs> but 24 liters, it's a big tank. It can get you the distance. But it really depends on whether you keep up with your maintenance because being a, a bike of its age, uh -huh. you know, it takes a bit more care and mm. loving for it to want to do what you want it to do. <laughs> you know. Yes, you, know, yes, you buy a new bike these days, you know, you don't have to think about maintenance for the first 10,000 kilometers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just ride, ride until you're happy. Mm -hmm. This bike, every 5 kilometers, I have to think, did I forget something? <laughs> <laughs> but it gives me on my toes. Mm -hmm. I've learned quite a lot about this bike since mm -hmm. I, I started riding it. For example, my spark plugs I changed myself, my mm -hmm. oil I've been changing myself. Basic work that I can do on my own, mm -hmm. I've picked it up myself and, and done it. Because oh. this is actually a Compared to modern bikes, it's a very simple bike to work on. The engine is a very straightforward engine. Most bike shops know how to do it. So even if, for example, I have no clue what I'm doing, I can just send the bike to the shop. More, more than nine times out of ten, they will know how to fix the bike. So every time if you DIY your maintenance, uh, what else do you do? Not much actually. For this this bike, it's very self-contained. Uh, maybe from time to time, I do strip the bike down to the cups, which is very confusing. <laughs> so there's, there's this manual that exists online that literally gives you step-by-step -step instructions uh -huh. on how to disassemble the bike. Oh, okay. Down to each, which screw to take out to do what. Oh, oh okay. so, that's interesting. Yeah, so I, I, I have a copy of that and I just sit down I go step by step. Wow, you are very dedicated, man. <laughs> oh, I dedicated. think in Europe it's quite popular. So in, in the UK, this bike is very, very, very popular. Mm -hmm. this, this bike is everywhere in the UK. Because of how simple it is and how reliable it has mm -hmm. been. You know, in their cold weather conditions, you know, a lot of people, they have removed their old cooler completely. Because 
there's excess weight for them. <laughs> you know, the bike has an air induction system uh -huh. that a lot of older Yamahas have that's also been removed on a lot of bikes. That's actually my next project. Mm, uh, okay. To try to remove that. Why why would you why would you want to uh, remove that? I think it's a weight saving thing, you know. Racer, racer, weight. Like. <laughs> how fast you want to go? So far, if you change oil, how many bottles? Four. Four bottles. Four bottles. Inline four, right? Mm -hmm. Inline four. So four bottles, more or less, gets me there. Uh, oil filter is a very generic Yamaha oil filter. The one I can stick my hand into. In Shopee, I can find it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. yeah. so okay. it's more a matter of where to keep the oil after you're done, you know. I think that's the common problem in Singaporean right? riders. You want to do your own, own but then you have a bottle of oil that is used and you don't know what to do. With it. I thought you just give to any bike shop, they will take in, right? You no. can, but the, do you really want to have a used bottle of oil sloshing in your. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, la, I mean, if. Like for me last time, I used to change my own mm. Vespa. I used to change my own oil. It's only like 300 ml of engine oil. So, you know, I can just like stash in. The bottle lah, until yeah. it's full already, uh, then I give to the bike shop. <laughs> this one is about 3.7 liters. <laughs> you want to take? You want to take? Carry around lah. Uh, one jerry can. I, I, cases, uh. I can just <laughs> fill plastic lah. Uh, then after that, fill my side cases with oil. <laughs> <laughs> like oil tanker. But you know, so stuff like this that I can do, I try to do on my own lah. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's such an old bike. I honestly trying not to spend too much on it. Yeah, true. You know, only that uh, these days bike shops they do work also half past six uh. Yeah, a lot, a lot, yeah. a lot of them, you know. Sorry to say, lah. It's my own observation. Yeah. But it, it, it's facts. I mean, a lot of shops nowadays they they need for the money. At the end of the day, there's only bikers in Singapore, mm. and it, someone needs to go to the workshop. Mm. Your workshop will open. You're in a convenient location. They're gonna come to you. You know, back in when I first started riding, mm -hmm. the shop that I went to with my Palsa, I paid twelve dollars to do an inspection on my bike. Uh -huh. They will adjust my chain. They will top up my air. They will check my brakes. Top up my coolant, yeah. everything for twelve dollars. Not bad. Eh? And that was a good deal, and that made me always want to go back to them because they put in the effort to try to you know, take care of your bike as their mm -hmm. customer. Now, least I go to tell the uncle, uncle, I want to change oil, and they will only change the oil. <laughs> uh, yeah, they will yeah. change the oil. They give you back the bike. There could be a million other issues with the bike. But you only got the oil change. Like for my brakes, for example, if they tried to have a look, I would have a lot more early warning that I had no brake pad. Usually, if you do send in for servicing, uh, which shop do you actually send to? Is there any particular shop that you favor favor most? Okay, or? so the two most common shops that I know diversion owners go to is Ban Hock Hin. They used to service TP bike, and they are currently servicing uh, LTA bikes already. Mm -hmm. And Planet Achong, he see the bike, you know. Uh -huh. Ban Hock Hin, they see the bike, uh -huh. then they see other bike. <laughs> you will join the queue, and then you wait. I, I still love you guys. <laughs> you, guys don't the only, you, don't... you guys are the only way I can get spare parts. <laughs> he needs you. <laughs> okay. She needs you. Oh, she <laughs> How far have you gone with this bike? On, with this bike? Have you... mm, okay, so I haven't really done touring. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a sport tourer. Okay. Uh, I got the bike about two months ago. Two months ago? Okay. Yeah, so mm. it's, uh, it's fairly new to me, this bike. At the time, I was just starting a new job. Mm. I didn't really have time to tour. So, so far, the furthest I've gone is JB Central. <laughs> this is the furthest, huh? So, right now, we are in Gelang, Gelang Pata. Gelang Yeah, this is the furthest this bike has gone. <laughs> okay. So, with the previous diversion, the white colour one, have you gone touring with that? Uh, the previous diversion died at the petrol station. Serious? I have no idea what happened to the bike. I. Uh -huh. Topped up full tank 97. I rolled the petrol station. I turned left onto the highway and the bike conked out. Oh. Then you tow? Tow. Oh, I thought that's so expensive. Was, wow, yeah, at yeah. least 500. That bike, it was nice to keep in the car park. Uh, and it would have been a very good display piece. But that was about it. <laughs> Let's talk about your experience riding the diversion, the old one and the new one. Have you had any disgusted look by other road users? <laughs> This is Zah. Zah wanted to ask you this. Uh. Yes. No, I, and it's a very common question. Even in my riding group, I show up and they all judge me. But I judge you too. You all ride sport bikes. <laughs> zoom, zoom, bang, bang. Time to time, people do give me that face. This one be TP guy. But end of the day, number one, I'm not a TP officer. Mm -hmm. My bike looks like a TP bike. 
And why are you disgusted if you're not doing anything wrong? Yeah, true, correct. <laughs> you correct why? If you're doing something wrong, you'll be guilty. That's why you're looking at me. <laughs> if you are following the speed limit, you shouldn't be looking at me. If you're using your handphone, you shouldn't be looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. This is a road safety message brought to you by Tambak Overlander. <laughs> It's, yeah, that's, what, that's quite true, you know. You know, if you don't commit anything wrong, why would you be so mad at, about somebody riding a so-called yeah, exactly. TP lookalike? But more recently, especially now that the divergence has been out of the picture from TP mm -hmm. for quite a while now, mm -hmm. people are more used to the BMs than mm -hmm. they are the divergence. So, usually only the old birds will recognize this bike. Mm -hmm. The yes. new gen of riders, don't really notice this as the TP bike, mm -hmm. you know. Like just on the way here, I was stuck in the rain. I stopped under a bridge. In front of me was this very, uh, very nice uh, Inchik mm -hmm. on a BMGS high end run. If you're watching, oh, this. I saw the photo. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we were just talking, and he was telling me as I stopped behind him, he got scared. <laughs> he thought he was being pulled over. Alamak. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not pulling him over. I'm hiding from the rain, same as you. <laughs> <laughs> but. You know, people are giving me looks, but majority of the people I've talked to, they, mm -hmm. they like this bike. They're like, hey, this is the TP bike. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the same model. It's not a TP bike. It's just made to look like one. Yeah, la, true. And, and, and people are very curious. I have the accessories like the speed meter mm -hmm. and, and, and all that, and the Polite even. So, I mean, if I wanted to, I can go full on, sell on. Sell on. <laughs> well, but at the end of the day, I also. I, so, I want people to see a bike, but hmm. maybe if you come to shows and stuff, maybe the bike will be fully done. Uh -huh. But if it's for my daily commuting, there's no need for all this extra stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People do give me that face. People do, you know, from time to time ask me, hey, you want to be TP? Then I do. I respond to them, yes, I am, I want to be TP. Uh -huh. I wanted to be a TP officer from very young age, but the police didn't want to let me become a TP officer. <laughs> give up, guys. I will make a good TP officer. So anybody have cursed you right in the face or not? No, uh, no, uh, not, not, not yet. <laughs> not that you know of also. Uh, uh, not that I know of. <laughs> Maybe you know, inside the car, can yeah. can basket you. <laughs> I, no, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. You know, and there, there's always going to be that subset of people which are usually the people that do all the illegal stuff. <laughs> they will see this bike and they're very triggered because they got scared. <laughs> yeah, true. You know, for no reason. But yeah. at the end of the day, for me personally, even though I don't like go around telling people like, oh, stop, pull over, whatever. It's not my job. I don't do that. I'm not legally allowed to. Mm -hmm. I just hope to be like a reminder to, to other mm -hmm. Yeah, that, yeah, true. You know, even though I'm not TP, they are watching you. You know, yeah, I know. at least be safe. Because I have a lot of friends who have gotten killed yeah. or gotten injured in, in accidents, car or bike. And it's for all the stupid reasons like speeding, playing with a handphone. Yeah, so sad. So, eh? if this like shocks someone out of their being stupid, then why not, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, the day we all want to go home safe, we all want to go back to our family. So, this is like a reminder la, to people. Ride safely. Ride safely or drive safely. Singapore roads are not banned for stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> like, you want to go fast, go fast. But there's a time and place. I'm sure you, you've heard of the team diversion group, right? Yeah, yeah. Correct. No, with all the members of the group aesthetically making their bike look like a TP bike with all the stripes and colours and all, <laughs> all the accessories. Bro, you like naming my you like tell, talking to them about my bag, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, la, I mean some of them also la. Yeah, some of and, them, then, la. and then some of them I got so so one 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 uh. fella. La. He wear the same, he wear the same jacket, grey right? colour jacket as oh, an EP jacket yes, correct, with correct. the word polite. Then <laughs> <laughs> you can buy off AliExpress. Uh. Yeah lah, then people get triggered. Oh, fake TP, TP wannabe and then curse him for, for yeah. nothing. You know, no, I, I, but at the same time, I think there is a, a limit lah. I mean, mm. you want to do up your bike like TP bike, Sure. You know, legally, you can't have the police crest. You mm -hmm. can't have the work police on your bike. I, I personally feel like wearing the jacket may be a step too far. Mm -hmm. like, you want to wear like a black frozen yellow jacket, sure. <laughs> but you want to wear the grey with the effective panel, I think a bit <laughs> misleading at that point. <laughs> like, you I mean, you want to do your whole bike up, you know, with the pole light or whatever. I mean, so be it. Lah. Your mm -hmm. choice, your bike. But don't dress like the TP. Lah. Let the TP have their own thing. <laughs> Just wear your own clothes and go. Mm. Yeah. If you ask me if Media Corp needs a traffic police officer, 
You can just engage you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed with the passion that you have on the D9. I mean, personally, I also like it. You know, I would love to have a try ah. on this bike, you know, mm. because from the way they describe it, mm. you know, with the, the with the smooth raw power that mm. this bike can produce, uh, I would love to experience it on myself. Ah, it's raw power into your legs, huh? seriously. But I don't have a license for it. <laughs> ah, too bad. Time to get it. But yeah, definitely, uh, this bike is an icon, especially for us Singaporeans. Huh? Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, it's just the bike itself, this bike itself is already legendary. Yes, mm. yes. It holds a very special place in many Singaporean drivers and riders' hearts. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, then, as I said, just now, you know, for good or bad reason, eh, it's really up to how you want to. <laughs> At the end of the day, you don't speed or use your phone while riding. Yes, uh, you are fine. But yeah. you want to, especially the phone. Eh. I, I, have, I have friends who have passed away because of driver using phone. Please don't use your phone, guys. Even during slow moving traffic. I made that mistake once. I rear ended a car. <laughs> oh, actually, I cannot react ended by a car before lah, because the driver behind me was using a phone. Yeah. Mm. But thank God, at the time you were riding a car. Lah. You know, if you see Chris on the road with this bike, you know, and if you think about feeling disgusted, what just think as it as a reminder for you lah to, you know, ride safely lah. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Adhere to the, all the traffic rules and mm. regulation, you know. But I have, I have to ask you the question. Like, when you are in the highway, do people slow down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, when I was testing the diversion, right, I brought back uh, that, that bike for one week, oh, one week, you know. I get disgusted looks as, as well. Uh, and the people that are in their car, and then they look, and then they look again. <laughs> the face, uh, wow, boy, tahan. Eh. Actually, so far, I'm honest, the most disgusted looks come from lorry drivers. So I, I came by Tuas on the way here. Uh -huh. So I had to go through that whole stretch from Jalan Abarak yeah, mm -hmm. to the checkpoints. So a lot of lorries. A lot of lorries, uh, they were in lane 2. Uh. I pop up from behind other lorries. Uh. You see, all start to lane change. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm doing you all a favour. Getting the lorries out of lane 2. <laughs> It's like that's magic, the, eh? That's the magic, right? I think I'm gonna get myself the BMW K12. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, make it colour like like a TV bike, but then, you know, just for the fun there, of it. There's already one on Carousel. Oh, on Carousel. <laughs> yeah, I saw uh, somebody go and decal, uh, then mm. uh, there were people talking about it. Uh. <laughs> Funny. Uh, okay, Chris, once again, huge thanks for you know, coming out and sharing your experience with the uh, Yamaha Diversion. Eh? Hopefully, one day we'll get a chance to review, not review, lah, eh? have a look at the actual one. Eh? If they even want to collaborate with us, lah, eh? I mean, only LTA will help a brother out. Yeah, she, she rejected me. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> they rejected us, yes. <laughs> ah, sad. Take two. Take two. <laughs> so, you, mean, you said everything, you described your yeah. bike very well. Eh? Yeah, so that's it for the vlog and we will see you guys in the next one.